Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time for the post-match pint after Celtic 5, Norm Calu 0. Got a bit of housekeeping to do before we start tonight, though. We don't have any full-time reaction. We had a bit of a problem with the mics outside the stadium, so we had to scrap it, come straight here. So we'll just have the post-match pint and we'll do some Twitter reaction as well. I'm joined again by Scott and Ryan to go over tonight's game. Ryan, start with you this week. We, we ended last week by saying... Hopefully we'll get a result that, that can finish the tie at home before we go over to Estonia. Do you think we got that tonight and what did you make of the performance? Absolutely convincing. Convincing. That is the one word for it. Uh, when we were walking in and I said to you, score predictions and mm. you said 2-0. But it was, again, <laughs> we couldn't really read off in. I know you're looking at shock right, but we're not take, uh, we didn't have a great deal to go off over that. When you look at the game tonight, how free flowing it was, how we were just more creative. I think it was quicker. I think the ball moved a bit better. I think if you look at Norm Calu, I think it probably is fair to say that Sarajevo were a slightly better team than Norm Calu. Yeah. And we just made it look so easy tonight. I think the creativity and the flair that we saw, it was nice to see Griff and Edward playing. Uh, it was good to have Christy coming in behind them and being a bit more kind of. Uh, kind of creative trying to get in through the box and, and make something happen and as the, the first half wore on it just got better and better Yeah, I think Scott I think the first 20 minutes we maybe struggled to get going into the flow but after the first goal we, we played such great football after the first goal um, another couple before half time as well and then into the second half we played some great stuff didn't we? No, absolutely, I think um, that first 20 minutes you just want to feel them out a bit um, see what they're about and see how they're going to set up. But right after that first 20 minutes, there was a lot of space because we were used to people sitting in at Celtic Park. They were sitting in, but there was gaps everywhere that uh, Callum McGregor, uh, Edward were taking advantage of. I saw some brilliant link-up play in the first half. It was between Edward and Callum McGregor. Bright wee triangles, combinations, lovely football. Um, kind of reminiscent of the Invincibles year mm. when we were getting to the byline by one twos and we flicked over the top and usually it was Scott Sinclair coming on the end of it and some cutbacks and started to see that sort of play tonight. Uh, and then the second half again, Mikey Johnson kind of came in and took that uh, combination play up with Edward again. And Edward's first touch, just brilliant. Mm. It's brilliant to play off of. Superb. His footwork is absolutely terrific. We see it time and time again. We said that against Sarajevo as well, Ryan, that you can't look too much. We can't look too much into these games, obviously, against teams at this level. They are unknown quantities. And obviously, like I said when we came into this game tonight, you don't really know where their level's going to be at. They weren't they weren't great. And and they, they weren't as defensively disciplined as, as say Sarajevo were. But we we from a Celtic point of view, we still we still done the job. We've played such great football we've touched on already with so many shots at goal in the second half and, and we've got a massively commanding uh, position in the tie now, leading the tie but I want to come on to Lee Griffiths, you, you kind of touched on uh, the two up front there first of all for Lee Griffiths, after everything that he's been through how good is it to see him back, he got 60 minutes tonight and, and what about that free kick? That free kick was sublime and again to see him back in the starting lineup tonight was really, really good and you heard just the the furore run about it because everybody's up to try and kind of cheer him on and mm -hmm. for the minute that he was announced in the team sheet when they're calling out the players and everybody keep the biggest just cheer, dying for him to get a goal. From get goal and I think it just, it was in the cards right, uh, Lee Griffiths getting a goal tonight was in the cards, our dead balls have probably like corners over the last 12 months have been horrendous I think we saw a bit better delivery when Lee Griffiths is there. He's the dead ball specialist in the team without without question. And when he stood up, the, the first free kick he had kind of come off the top of the, wa the wall and I thought Bruno was going to put that away mm. when he scampered in behind. And their keeper had a couple of good saves in the first half. Aye, definitely. And I think when he stood up for that second one, like you said, as soon as he hit it, you knew it was going in. Amazing for the wee man. He just, like, when he, when he was right coming up to my side and when he went down there in the front and just he almost broke down yeah. and when he, he had them after the match he genuinely felt like he was going to break down in tears so Aye. amazing Aye. brilliant moment wasn't it brilliant brilliant, brilliant for him and I'm at the other end of the ground by the way and as soon as it left his foot I was like it's in like you, you just what you know you know you can just see the trajectory of the ball right in the top corner fantastic Scott we've seen him and Edward start together obviously we played 3-5-2 effectively 
there's always been a lot of clamour for number one Celtic to play with two strikers and for, for Griffiths and Edward to play together. How do you, you think they've done tonight as a partnership? Do you think they linked up well? And obviously we know it's early days, they haven't played together a lot, but how do you think they've done? Well, see, honestly, do you know what I was thinking at 3 now was we've scored a goal from uh, a header, right, from a good free kick in. Set piece, yeah. Set piece, scored a penalty, and then we scored for a, a dead ball. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, we're playing way better as than what the... I uh, no. <laughs> I was just saying as a Celtic, but I just thought that is crazy the one when you think about it. Uh, and that, I think we've missed Lee Griffiths based on those dead balls, not yeah. just scoring free kicks, but but deliveries. Uh, and I just thought like we're playing so much better than what the score shows mm -hmm. based on f free play. I thought yeah. why are we not going to go for, for free play? Uh, Edward never gets his goal, which was strange. Um, did they play brilliant together? Uh, I mean, they didn't get a goal to show for it. Essentially, Edward um, didn't. Uh, I, I, and I know Lee Griffiths got a goal, but I mean from free from play, open play, yeah. from open yeah. play um, it worked out okay. I think Edward likes that. I think the balls into the box from whether it's 18, 20, 25 yards out in the corners were much better and we're meeting someone. Mm. So we're, like I was saying a few weeks ago, we're usually playing, playing balls in far too quickly and there's mm. nobody there. That's not really happening with those two up front. Yeah, uh, something I think as well, we know it's not the football fashion these days to play two up front, but there was a few times where Edward had like done a wee over and let it run through to Griffiths. It didn't quite come off tonight. But that's something that Edward does regardless of whether he's playing with a partner or not. He likes to like drift deep and come and get the ball. And we know how good he is with the ball at his feet and running at defenders. So to, to let Griffiths be up there, and, and he almost, at, at times I thought, particularly in the first half, because Griffiths came off about the 60-minute mark, particularly in the first half I thought Edward almost as like a free roll. He could just go in into wee pockets and try and pick up the ball and and link the play. And I think that Edward, he worked hard tonight, he didn't get his goal, but I think that's something that if they're going to play together more often that, that we'll see and that, that, that will help Edward because he really likes to come deep and then Griffiths can be like the man stretching the defence in behind. 100% and just when you were talking there, Scott, I genuinely think that just the open play thing where we didn't get a goal for open play with both of them on the, the pitch it just is indicative of the fact that they haven't played enough together there was a couple of nice flashes of genius for both of them trying to play someone in the box trying to just get the other one come in. off. it didn't mm -hmm. come off and that is something that will come if we can get a bit more partnership with the two mm -hmm. and Edward does like to be a bit more fluid and just float about in that kind of that 10 spot there and try and come in for the out wide and, and create something a wee bit more kind of coming into the box as mm. opposed to being in there and Griff is his ultimate poacher mm. in and he'll get a goal for you any day of the week so mm. I, I think that it could come good. Definitely, definitely we'll see, it'll be interesting to see next week actually if we, we stick with those two together, don't know how many changes they'll beat the team next week given the lead we'll come on to that a wee bit later on but I want to touch on briefly again, maybe not in as much detail as last week, Scott, but um, I think we're going to be talking about Ryan Christie quite a lot this season. And Ryan will be. <laughs> Ryan <laughs> we know will Ryan be. will be. That's, that's like an absolute guarantee. But we've seen again tonight just how good he is. He, another assist, two goals. All right, people say the first one's a penalty, but have you seen Celtic's penalties in the past 12 months? <laughs> so, um, lovely in the bottom corner. And the second goal was just, just beautiful. He's got so much technique that his, his technical ability is brilliant and he's added those things to his game since he's been loaned to Aberdeen. Like the a more upper body strength, more guile. Um, he's just brilliant, isn't he? So much more motivated than what we've seen him a year ago. Um, and as you say, put on 10 kilos or something. Mm. Um, he's, he's, he's brilliant. He's a really, really good player. Um, Probably, as Ryan was saying, one, probably the best player that we've got. Right now in form, is it form, right? is it form yeah. or is it he's just that good, massively talented, delighted that, that he's uh, fit again. Mm. Um, aye, I can't add I've much more. That if you want to talk about Ryan Christie, that, that, <laughs> I'm that, that, man, I, it's just I want to say, Ryan, though, it's, it's massive for us to keep him fit because he has had a, a injury problems last year that kind of hindered him and, and didn't really let him get into a, a real good flow of like months and months together, good performances, but do you think, obviously a lot of people are already tipping him for play of the year and obviously it's early days, like it, early. We've, we've played two competitive games and everybody's having nailed on for play of the year, but if he can stay fit, he's, 
He's got that in him, hasn't he? I've got one thing to say, boys, right? Regardless of what happens this season, he's my player of the year. He's got a thousand <laughs> pound on it. He's, he's already got a thousand pound on it. <laughs> he's my player of the year. Um, aye, a hundred percent. It was unfortunate the last injury they got being facial not wound. Good. Aye, so that was a bit unfortunate. You can't really say that's injury prone, but I would like to think that we can maybe see Ryan Christie get a good run in the, the squad this year because if he's fit, he's almost like right now in form, similar to a Callum McGregor where he's the first name in the team sheet, he has to be in that first starting 11. Mm -hmm. We can week out when he's playing the way he is just now. If he's fit, he has to be there. I said to you on the way back here that we just need someone with that creative spark, mm -hmm. with that energy, and he is at an abundance. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, just before we move on, that second goal there was so reminiscent of us at Murrayfield last season for the semi-final. Mm -hmm. It was very, very similar. Just the way that he cut in and sent it into the top corner, amazing finish. And Ryan Christie, my player of the season. Yeah, he's your guy. <laughs> yeah, he's your guy. Um, I think just the, the last thing I want to say on it is, you see, and you look, he could get sent off tonight. By the way, absolutely scythed that boy <laughs> at, towards challenge. the end of the first right half. After he scored as well. Aye, yeah. which which again, that's something that's in his game, which is not a bad thing because he was led into that by chasing the ball down and he almost won it back from in like the, guy, the the defender in one and then he's he's chased the guy at the byline he's just he's flown in but that's something that energy and that that pressing that you get from him is something that maybe we don't see for Tom Rogic and that's something that he's, he's got over Tom Rogic like in abundance isn't it? Aye uh, he's got about five gears Tom Rogic has got one <laughs> 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 no I mean I love Tom Rogic because he, when he does stuff it looks so effortless and I think that's brilliant to watch when it works but mm. see when it doesn't work it's so frustrating to watch because yeah. it almost looks like um, like they're not trying which usually isn't the case Edward gets that kind of thrown yeah. at him a few times as well mm. um, no I want to see Ryan Christie in there over Tom Rogic uh, any day of the week Thank you. The, the Can I just say something, by the way? Did you not know think Jamesy Forrest has been getting a bit quiet? Yeah, it's been a bit quiet. I, I touched on that in the, the Stanton 11 prediction, that he's not really looked as sharp as he probably could in pre-season. He just looks a wee bit... Uh, he's, it's not that he's making mistakes, um, and it, it doesn't stand out, but after... I can't remember the last game where I went, James was brilliant uh, tonight, uh, which was so... It was <coughs> nearly every week last year. Mm. Um, uh, strange. Uh, I think maybe he's just not up to speed yet, I think. He, he was so good last season, but we're, we're maybe seeing, uh, it's worth remembering, we're only technically halfway through pre-season, or what would be a pre-season yeah. for a normal football club that didn't need to play four qualifiers before the season started. But to mo moving on to something that was a big thing tonight uh, before the game with the, the, starting, the starting 11 was near Beaton was still in there. We, we touched on it, it was 3-5-2. Ball and Golly was at left wing back and Forrest was kind of right wing back. Um, what do you think of that? I think I thought Julian would start. I've been thinking Julian's going to start for a, a few weeks now, and he's he's not. What do you think that says? Because that's something that a lot of people seem a bit bemused about. If this is a second qu second qualifying round now, Norm Calu, it seems like a good game for him to come in and play. But Beaton, who is playing out of position, is still in there ahead of him. So d next week now, because we've got such a comfortable lead, do you think we could send under? 20s to go and play that game next week so are we going to see Julian then because surely there's never been a better time to to play him and to get his match fitness up like when are we going to see him again we had that brief discussion right I think that Julian should already have been in and I think when you look at again we just briefly touched on it Neil Lennon saying that the guys in there are doing a job and tonight you can't fault them they actually did do a job tonight because it was almost easy street, yeah. like it was quite plain sailing I would like to think that now he has to, like if, if he doesn't put him in now, the question has to be asked why, why are we still holding this guy back when this team is clearly not at the level that we would have to worry mm. about putting someone in who maybe isn't sharp enough already and I would like to think that Julian will go in mm. Yeah and that, that's the important thing as well Scott because these teams aren't testing us very much defensively, No, but we're very quickly going to come up against a team who will test us defensively. It might be the third round, probably will be the third round if you look at Cluj or Maccabi Tel Aviv. Yep. And and certainly in, in the playoff, provided we get there, like we will be tested defensively. So as soon as possible, you would think we want to get the the first choice, the preferred backline in there, 
and surely it won't include a centre midfielder playing out of position? No, you want to get minutes in Julian's legs as soon as possible. You don't spend £7 million on something you're not going to use. Guys, mm. he's not collectible. Mm. You know what I mean? He's um, our best centre-back, I would hope so. So, as soon as he can get, uh, there's got to be something up. It's not that uh, he thinks he always beat on the time because he's done well. Beaton's not really been tested um, in, in these games and you can't judge Beaton based on that. You can only play what's yeah. in front of you. But he's playing out of position and uh, I think he knows that. So I just think get him in as soon as possible. I think there's something going on. I think it's it's probably just fitness. It probably is just fitness. Neil Lennon won't want to take unnecessary risks in these games. Like, <laughs> I hope it's just a fitness thing and, and we see him as soon as possible because... If it goes on in the next week and then we are into the third round and we still don't know if he's going to start, then people are going to start asking questions about what the score is. Is he going to get 83 minutes against Cowden Peel for something? Uh, Marvin Comper too. Well, <laughs> I know, it's an expensive Marvin Comper. But, I mean, joking aside, you, you just want to see him as soon as possible and, and thinking ahead to next week, off the back of talking about that, do you think there'll be an array of changes to the team? Do you think, again, because it's technically still pre-season, and it's as good as a pre-season game with a 5-0 lead that we'll be getting minutes into the, the first team's legs or do you think we'll see a few changes? I think, you, again, there's been occasions where things have went awry and Celtic have Astana. been embarrassed, right? So we kind of be Sorry, not embarrassed, but we were 5-0 up against Astana and then Aye. it got a wee bit panicky Aye. for a while. So we kind of be too complacent. So I don't think we'll see wholesale changes. I think we're going to see, like you said, or I will hope we're going to see Julian come into that centre half. And I would like to think that we can get Ayer into centre half room and start to think of a solid centre back pairing that we're going to use in the third qualifying. And then, mm -hmm. like you say, if we get into the playoffs. Other than that, I think we might just see you guys like Lewis Morgan and Mikey Johnson, who started off the bench today, obviously he's just come back for a knock. But I think you'll see them probably start the game as opposed to what the starting lineup was today. I would like to see Griff get more minutes in his legs. So probably, just as you mentioned laterally, I think we're going to see more first-team players get more minutes in their legs rather than wholesale changes and bringing in some of the younger guys. Yeah, what do you think the team next week, Scott? Do you expect a, a few changes or keep it pretty much the same? Um... Probably a few changes. Uh, most likely, Mikey Johnson to come back in. I don't know if he's going to play Bolly up that high again. Aye, Andrew, it doesn't seem like Bolly ever wants to really well, come back. Aye, I <laughs> think uh, we don't know. It's a bit concerning actually to see him going down again because he's 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 yeah. played like two or three yeah. games. So he's he's came off injured twice. So hopefully it's not any long term issue there. But I think tonight Johnson's place was taken by Griffiths. Or mm. I mean, we know Edward can I was the one that played at slightly deeper than Griffiths but so I think if it, if it is going to be Griffiths and Edward next week then it, w it won't be Johnson but it'll be interesting to see what mm. happens with that I hope it is the two up front uh, I liked it and I think I want to see how it develops because I think it depends who you want to build your team around if you want to build your team around Edward you want to put someone up next to him um, I think he struggled slightly with 22 goals or something mm. last year the good return but I think he just likes someone up next to him uh, and I think it can work for us but then you're sacrificing another position which is very creative for us as well. Mm. Glad it's not my, not my decision. Aye, definitely. I think, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how often he's going to use it, the two up front, but it does give Edward, Edward that freedom, uh, like I touched on already. Yep. Is there anything else we want to touch on before we round up? Anything else you've seen tonight that you thought that was worthy of note? I'm thinking... Um, it was just nice to see, and again, you can't really judge much off of it, but it was nice to see that the hunger was there right up to the final the final whistle. The hunger was there, the passion was there to, to press up high. Mm. We did press them high, yes, they're not a great outfit, but we pressed them really high and we were hungry and we were driving forward and we were trying to make something happen, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, still pushing, still mm. pushing, 5-0, still pushing. Mm. That's what I want to see Aye, in Celtic this season, mm -hmm. and that's th that is the biggest for watching the game, that is the biggest point that I wanted to see taken forward this mm. season. Can we start to push a bit more? Can we start to press a bit higher? When we can, obviously when you come up against a better outfit, third, maybe play off into the Champions League if we were in that position, then you're going to have to play a different game. But when we can, I want to see us pressing a bit higher like we're used to. It's good to see us steamrolling our team. Well, well, aye, that's it. It's, Absolutely it's brilliant it's to see that. Ruthlessness in it and yeah. to... to you can only be what's in front of you at the end of the day, and, and we've done that convincingly. 
so we scored three in the first half. Yeah. Um, and how often have we seen Celtic have a brilliant first half performance and then tail Just off in the second off, half? Yeah. Um, and that never happened. So we came back out, same intensity, couple hunger. of changes. Aye, yeah. hunger and ruthlessness. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, we, we get a lot more shots on target than we would normally get. Mm. So clinical, how clinical we are in front of goal will get better because yeah. it's, it's early on in the season. But uh, the ruthlessness is there. Aye. Brilliant Definitely, to see. 100%. Plenty of positives to take from tonight. You know what to do, like the video, comment with your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We passed 16,000 today, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you again to the people here at the Corinthian. It's a beautiful setting to do a post-match pint, I've got to say. We'll see you next week for the second leg. Thank you.